last week we did the theory of anchoring, what you need to do, what you need to look out for, the anchorages, what you need to check for, the bottom type, what is a scope, why scope is important, and the wind directions, and all sorts of theory things that you need to prepare yourself or the boat. This episode we're going to just check out the practical side and let's dive right in with no further ado. Okay, we think our anchor spot is going to be there. So we're looking at the wind conditions. We know we need to turn. We will need to turn like that to get our bows into the wind. But we have a sail. Although we already showed you guys in a previous episode, or maybe in a future episode, I don't know. In some episode, we're going to show you that me drop the anchor while under sail and then Pietro drop the anchor while under sail but for now we're going to do it under engines uh, we're going to anchor under engines so we need to get the Genoa in so the first thing that Pietro did was she put the furling line onto the winch making sure all the clutches are open and then she's going to release that one ease it out while she's furling in. Q is now your tight. <laughs> so I also heard that she started the engines um, because now that we the, the sails is off there's no power, nothing powering the boat. So she started one engine to give us now some movement. One, one of the tools that we use is radar. So um, combined with IIS, it works quite well. And the reason why radar is supplemental to IIS is, is that even while we're here, I see only one other boat on IIS while well, there is one, two, three, four, five, and a boat that's moving. If you look there, you don't see any one of them. I only see that one over there, which is was there all the time. But you can see on IIS, there's one, there's one, here's one, and I think this is another one here. So radar is definitely a tool that I use quite often. Now, you need to set the radar correctly. Um, we can do a whole episode just on radar, but you need to make it for harbor. If you make it weather, everything just gets mushy because it's trying to pick up moisture as well and it just gets all blurry. So if, you, if you're approaching uh, close quarters, make it harbor mode or make the intensity and again as, as little as possible also the the Raymarine radar has this interesting thing that if you if you make if you zoom out it's putting out more power but if you start zooming in it actually puts less power so if you <laughs> I can see that boat uh, much easier so it's the one just here next to us um, so you can see that boat, and if you can see, there's a passing one, the one with the two masts just behind the blue boat. And that's the one that we actually see on the radar. So you can see there's a passing boat. The radar is not showing exactly where the IIS is showing, which is normal because IIS is only updating every few seconds. Um, so this is the one next to us. So if I'm going to zoom out a little bit more, then you will start seeing that's the shore which is right over there and you can see here's another boat here there's another boat there 
this is the one here next to us and that's the one that's moving away so by using this we can now also determine how we will anchor at this moment that first range ring is 232 meters so i know anything inside here is at least 332 meters from our current position so if i zoom in more if i zoom a little bit more this is where our anchor symbol is set we'll talk about anchor symbol now you can see 116 so that boat is 116 this is 116 meters so it is at least 116 meters away from us we've got a 100 meter chain so if we need <laughs> We're not going to put it out here in three meter water, but if we do need, if there's a big storm coming or whatever, then I know I can let out all the scope and we will still not go into that boat because that boat is 116 meters far and we only have 100 meters off chain. So this is a very, very important tool that they use quite often. So remember, reduce the zoom in basically, reduce the gain, so that you only see the objects that you want and it's not over blasting the area with, with electronic signals. When you overlay the radar with the chart, you can also see our charge, charts is normally set up north is pointing to the top, the top is pointing north. So here you can see the radar now with the, with the shore, you can see the red dots there. There's that blue boat, that one over there. And Here's those two boats that's over there. So you can have a very good picture if we overlay the, the chart, the radar with the chart. Another recommendation that I would really insist on is if you approach the anchorage, whether it's daylight or night, take some far lookers, look at it, and try to figure out where's open spots, how the boats are laying, and if there's an open spot, maybe why there's an open spot, maybe there's a wreck or something there, um, or a pipeline, or maybe a bad chain that's lying somewhere there, so, or just rocks. So make sure that you look and make careful observation about the surroundings, how far they are, what's the wind, how's the waves doing, is there a side swell. Um, so as you approach, you get familiar with, with the anchorage that you're approaching. Another tool that you can use is a range finder. Um, this is a, a Vortex binoculars and it has a range finder button there. But you can also get from the Golf, you know, Golf uh, ranges. They also have the Golf players have this little monocle that you can look through and you can see. And basically what you do is you look through them and you press the button and you see oh i'm 338 meters away from shore or i can look at that and i can see 118 meters from that boat which is good because <laughs> the radar also said that um, so you can you can accurately also when you're sitting at and there's a blow and you want to ma make sure that the guy in front of you um, doesn't drag onto you you can all the time just every now and then just check him out and see whether he's getting closer or not. If he's getting closer, you can make plans much more earlier and you can call him on a radio or you can dinghy over and you can you can sort things out. But so a range finder I think is also a good idea. So if you don't have radar, you don't have all these sophisticated stuff, just buy it cheaper. I think it's hundred dollars or something like that from the golf range finders and you can you can also see how far the objects around you is. I normally look at the wind and at the anchor spot I go into the wind. If there's a current, you will quickly find out that there's a current. How do we find out that there's a current? Just look at the boats around you. You see those boats are lying like this, lying like that. That one is going a little bit like this, but I think it's busy turning. It, I think it lifted, lifted this. But for example, if he did not lift it, this anchor, the boats are swinging a little bit like that. So that's true. You will see it will swing back and forth, back and forth. And the boats over there, they do the same. So you can see they, they do swim at anchor. But generally you can see the boats goes like this, this direction, this direction. 
And this is the same way that you can approach. So if you approach the same way these boats are, are lying and you go the same direction and you see the wind is coming from a different direction, then you know there's a current. But generally, there will be not too much current. So you will go into the wind the same direction as the other boats. Now if you drop your anchor and you lay back, you, you can easily now see here, there's no boats behind you. And you can see how far you can go, because you go with the wind backwards in that direction while you lay down your chain. So you know exactly your scope, you know exactly where you're going to lay between these other boats, and you will not confuse the other people. But sometimes I see people coming in like across the grain. They're coming like this while all the boats is lying like this. And then they lay the anchor like this, as if they will, oh, I'm too close to that boat, so I'm going to go like this, because then I'm not close to that boat. End of the day, the wind is going to swing you close to that boat. So the best way of doing things is look at the other boats, how they lay, go in parallel with them, lay your anchor, and you know exactly how far you can go backwards without eating other boats. And then when the wind, when you settle, you will see, you settle more or less where you are now. We now getting ready to anchor. So we're going to anchor into the wind. So we need to bring our bows into the wind. So we're going to drop the anchor there. And Pietro is now going to prepare the anchor. So what she's doing, she's getting the remote control out of the way and nook the bridle and put that also out of the way so it's not in any danger of getting caught on. Okay, she, she managed to get everything ready. I'm just going to press a button. So from my side, my preparation is I'm going to press this button, hold it in till it says it's ready for me and then I preset the anchor length for 60. Even though our depth here is six meters um, if the meltem is coming up i want to know that we have enough scope not that we're going to anchor in six meters depth we're going to well we're following a six meter contour line so i think we will be in six meters but it's muddy and it is salt so we're not going to take any chances and the idea is to go into the wind. So if you can see there, we're going to turn, 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 turn until we're into the wind. So that is more or less the wind. And I'm going to keep the bows into the wind. The reason for that is as we drop anchor, the wind, as we get to zero, we will drop the anchor and the wind will start pushing us backwards. So we need to make sure that the anchor is getting to the floor bit of the sea at the same time as we start moving backwards. And that is a tricky part. So how do we do that? So I'm seeing my depth is six meters. So, and I've got a counter here. So when it reaches around six, I want to time it so that the boat is start going astern as the anchor hit, but not too fast, because if it's too fast, the anchor will start dragging. And if there's grass, it will bolt up the grass and you don't want to do that. So you want to drop the anchor and then lay the chain down so that the chain just goes like that. And not literally just like plonk, plonk into the water. So I'm going to go around here. So I'm going to tighten the wheel. It is centered. You can also see over there it is centered. I'm just going to make sure that our bow is turned into the wind, so I'm going to turn a little bit more. And the thing is, you don't want to be too close to that side, because if the wind is going to change, then you're in trouble again. Okay, we're almost into the wind, so I'm going to go back. And now I need to bring our speed down. So I'm going to go neutral, just making sure that now the bow is staying into the wind. I'm looking at my speed over ground because now it's not anymore about my, my speed lock, the boat speed is now about the speed over ground and this is why the speed over ground for me is very important. 
and as I already set it up so as we start going backwards just before we go um, so I normally take the detailed one so I can see the contours much more closer and then a big thing the moment I drop the anchor and I think the anchor is going to grab I drop the waypoint this makes me two things I know the direction of the of my heading this black line is I'm pointing now to the anchor or not to the anchor as well as I can see the distance to the anchor so I know now we are 32 meters away from the anchor we have at this moment 30 meter road out so that is pretty close <laughs> it's not always as close as that if you make a waypoint the moment you the moment you know the chain is the same the chain length is the same depth as this you start moving a little bit backwards i drop the waypoint then you go to the waypoint i say go to and immediately it shows me um, the direction uh, the direction the bearing but also the the distance from that waypoint so i can now see whether i'm going towards the anchor or not towards the anchor and then how far it is making sure the bow stays in the wind i'm going to drop it it's dropping and i'm checking here it's now getting two meters three meters we are almost standing still five meters. I'm going to start going a little bit backwards. Six meters, six meters. So that anchor is now on the seabed. So I'm going backwards now and very soon my blue line will turn around. Uh, there it is, it's flipping around. We're going backwards. He's now registering that we're going backwards as well. We're going at around 0.4 knots backwards at this moment. 0.5, 0.6. Point 0.8, point 0.9, I think this is about it. Just turning the bow into the wind again. I think the wind has changed. Making sure that our speed don't pick up too much. Because the wind is pushing us, but I remember I don't want the anchor to drag before we have our road out. Now I can see we have our road out. It's already 35 meters and we're 6 meters deep, so that's 1 to 5, so we're good. Sorry, I thought I saw a dolphin, but it's not. So I can keep the bow into the wind. The wind is pushing us quite a lot. The reason why you want to get the bow into the wind is again our chain can then go over at the bottom of one of our hulls. And that's never a good thing. Ik ga niet vannacht in die wind. Ik kan maar ook. Ja, we is daar in 12. Oké, okay, Pietro is going to lock now the chain and then we're going to test it. But at this moment it's very important to keep the chain straight ahead. Oké. Okay. It's locked. Let's check it out. Stay with the bow into the wind. Okay, now the chain is busy picking up. And the important thing is to make sure that the chain doesn't jump but that it holds. I'm looking at the side. We had 1000 revs, both engines. Point 0.6, point 0.5, point 0.4. I think it's grabbing, it's getting holding it. So now with the bow into the wind, I'm looking at the side, I'm looking at the references at the picture. You guys can maybe look here and find a, a dog at that side and make sure that CISO is not moving backwards. 
important to keep the bow still in the wind. So now it's 1,500 revs. Pedro is checking whether the chain is jumping because if the chain is jumping it means we maybe got hold on to a little rock ledge and it just jumped off so it means that the, the anchor there is not digging okay you guys don't see any movement and we, we are swinging so there might be that kind of movement okay 2000 Also looking at my speed over ground, it's 0.3. It, we are moving a little bit, it seems like. We good, huh? Okay, so we are maybe good for the Maltemi, but I don't think we're good for a hurricane. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go forward so we ease it, the, the tension on the chain so the chain drop a little bit so that Pedro can uh, put the bridle up and unlock and let the bridle out. Okay, so Pedro is hooking it up. Unlock it. Okay, now I know I need to uh, put six uh, 10 more meters up on the counter okay 10 more meters here yeah, so that was 60 so we're going to put it now to fingers clear Let's see whether the bridle or the chain takes the... So the bridle must take the, the, the strain and not the chain. There we go. Yeah. So that is now done. So now we can lock this one. Just a little bit. We can close it. And that's how it's done. And we were in a muddy anchorage just now. And I think we're in the same again. Right. We can now stop the engines. <laughs> now a very important step is to sit back, relax and observe how does the boat swing how is the boat swinging in relation to other boats remember we've got now 70 uh, this one 73 meters of of chain out so it means that other boats might have a lesser scope and we might swing differently than they if we are one to three and they are one to five they will swing also differently. So it's very important if there's other people here to ask them what is their scope, uh, no, like what is the, num the length of chain I got out and whether they're happy that we come in next to them. Don't anchor right on top of another guy if you're only two people in the bay. And yes, it looks like we're fine. So don't rush to get to your dinghy and don't rush to get to shore. Just sit here and relax for at least half an hour to make sure that the environment stays the way as you thought it's going to stay. Very, very important. If you have an uh, anchor alarm, then that is now the times to go and say alarms, navigation, anchor drag, switch it on. It is now centered, it's 75 meters, we are good. We want to edit the alarm area, we want to move the center to, we are almost fully all the chain out. So we're going to move it like that, done, done. So the center is now where we got the anchor set. 
That's it. Say, and then we need to tidy up. We, the royal we. <laughs> Somebody has to do it. <laughs> I guess the one, that's the one that's not the captain. <laughs> Pretty. If there is an opportunity to dive, I would recommend, highly recommend to dive. Not all the places is, is good to dive. Either the water is too cold or the water is too dirty or you're in a river or whatever the, the excuse can be for not diving a chain. But if you have any doubt, when you split back and you set that anchor and there was just a little bit of giving or a little bit of jump, go rather go <laughs> rather go and dive the chain um, and we normally dive the chain it is likely we most of the time in waters that is diveable and temperature is good and so we go and dive the, the, the chain and if you if you're lucky you might get a surprise down there so go dive the chain